Hello, welcome to another Impartial Theorist. Got all sorts of exciting bullshit to talk about this week. Don't use it for In the news this week, Stormy Daniels once yeah. again. And why? Off some bullshit. <laughs> the most bullshit. bullshit bullshit because even the court decided it was bullshit. Yeah. So Stormy Daniels was arrested on charges of essentially being a stripper. <laughs> Yeah. Because she was being a stripper and doing what strippers do, slamming her boobs in people's faces. Just doing her shit. Yeah. Because you know she's a traveling stripper. So. Yeah. And so this is literally what she got arrested for. There were uh, undercover officers in a strip club in Ohio that Stormy Daniels was visiting. And supposedly, according to the Ohio Police Department, it was in part of a bigger investigation into like prostitution or potential prostitution or something like that. Nah, it was a setup for Stormy Daniels. We all know that shit. That's what a lot of people are calling out because it's like it's apparently the... In so in Ohio state law, this was passed in 2007, there's a law that says um, people who normally or like regularly work at a sexually oriented business who appear nude cannot touch people unless they're members of their immediate family or something yeah, like that. Yeah, which is weird. It's a why, really why weird would law. you want to touch members and of your immediate family in a strip club? Yeah. That's the specific it would be kind of interesting just fucking law. learning where that law, how it came into place, but... Yeah. So anyway, um, the law that she was arrested for actually was specifically why she got off because she isn't a stripper that appears regularly at, at that, that strip, strip club. club. She's yeah. like a traveling stripper, so... She got off the hook. Um, well, Michael, Michael Avenatti was on the case like immediately. Because you know he's he's a wrangler. Like, he he basically her guardian. Because some rich dude is obviously paying his bills and trying to take Trump down, Trump down using Stormy Daniels. So Stormy Daniels is just a prop. So he got on a fucking flight, got her out of jail, and she stripped. She was she stripping. She stripped last night again in Columbus, Ohio. Really? Yeah, at a different club. So, so they don't get her for that bullshit. Because if she strips there again, she's regular. So she had to strip somewhere else, I guess. But, yeah. I think all this shit is kind of bullshit. But also... Yeah, I, and so a lot of people are saying, because, like, where did this come from? Why Stormy Daniels and this law? It just seems so out of the blue. And, like... um yeah, but the, uh, yeah. So it, some people looked into it. Actually, I think Michael Avenatti and like showed that there was like no other arrests or prosecutions of this particular crime. Like, so basically, it is a law, but it's not yeah. enforced. It's not enforced. This is like the only time on record that it was enforced, and it was Stormy Daniels. Like, which is like, nah. And why would the fucking officers there? Like, they say it was to catch people fucking doing shit, but. Did they do that previously at that strip club or, or anyone before any strip club before? Was that the first strip club they, they decided to hit? <laughs> well, yeah, they did. That's that's fucking. Well, that's and it says that like the officers were the ones that like were getting whacked in the face. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're dudes in the like. in the strip club. Like, yeah. It just seems odd to me. Like, what is that sort of our were. Also, Columbus also, place are putting their resources into is going into strip clubs undercover. Like, yeah. really? Um, I mean, sure, if there was, like, this big underground prostitution ring, but considering there was no evidence of that and the only arrest they did make was of Stormy Daniels, it just screams suspicious. And why? What What are police doing in a strip club? Yeah, and why are they doing probably sitting in the front row? Because if she's putting her tits in their face... They have to be close enough to the stage that she doesn't walk to the back. She's not gonna walk to the back of the strip club and smack some dude in the face. That's weird. She's gonna do it if she's sitting in the front. And you know they're dickheads because they're taking up prime real estate. People actually want Stormy Daniels to smack their smack her titties <laughs> in their face. Oh, you don't think they don't? You think they don't want to, huh? <laughs> nah, I think they're there to entrap her, and that's fucked up. Cause people paid to people paid to probably get the chance to sit in those seats and yeah. get smacked in the face with some titties. But, some Stormy Daniel titties. Yeah. Especially if you've been reading about Stormy Daniels all week. You've jacked off to like some VC VCR porn. Was it what what, what was it before? Yeah. Some shit you probably yeah, bought in a, the back of a store with those fucking I'm not American. I don't know how you guys used to do this shit before. But 
Well, so, there still yeah. are video stores you can go to. I don't. I'm not sure if they still sell VHS, but you can yeah. definitely still go get your DVDs. Yeah. Into that. All I'm trying to say is, if you just finished jacking off to your VHS <laughs> and expect to get smacked with some titties <laughs> in the face in high def real life, and these people take your spot, three of them, right? How many cops were there? I think it was three. Yeah. Yeah, that's the real injustice here. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to some. Less fucked up shit, Elon Musk. People are trashing him because he tried to build a submarine to rescue the Thai kids that was stuck in the cave for three weeks. That's just mad libs. That's just a bunch of words I just strung together. But anyway, Elon Musk built a submarine from some SpaceX leftover metal and shit to get the, like, as a backup plan to get the kids out. And people were like, Elon Musk is trying to trick take the credit. He's just a billionaire trying to boost his ego. And this shit kind of just spiraled. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think the reason, so like, uh, people are calling him a narcissist, like using this as like a um, PR stunt or like a way to get some PR. And I mean, I think his responses to it is like, if I was a narcissist, which I may be, at least I'm a useful one. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that kind of nails it here because he's not even saying that he's not, but... Because like, he kind of is. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I think he is. He and he's owns not that de- shit. Debating it, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of valid criticisms of Elon Musk. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think he does hype his stuff and kind of like dream, like... But sells he, he sells a, a bit of his a, dreams. He a made a semi truck. Like. It's a semi truck that goes faster than an Aston Martin. That shit is crazy. He does what he says he's gonna do. I'm not an Elon Musk fan, but it may be 20 percent of me is. But yeah, shit, he does the shit he says he's gonna do. And this submarine, he built that shit in how many days? Cause someone like the whole shit started off a tweet, which is how <laughs> most of his things go. Somebody tweeted him, "Can you help? Can you help them?" He said cool. And then he started building a fucking submarine to help these kids. And he had been coordinating with the crew chief who 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 they had been getting the measurements and all that shit from. And they did want to use it as a backup. The mayor said he wanted to use it as a backup. But somebody uh, who, who was it? There was a the Thai provincial governor or some shit who was inaccurately de- described as the rescue chief said that it's not useful, which was kind of fake news because he doesn't know anything about the engineering or any of that shit. He's the fucking governor. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah, and people flew with that shit and kind of, that's what made the situation explode. Yeah. Like, why are you building this shit when nobody needs it? Yeah, but I also think that was like people just like going too far looking into it. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, they didn't really confirm what that guy's position was and like what if his opinion mattered they were just like looking for that opinion to like yeah. throw elon musk under the bus <coughs> which i think you just don't have to do there's a, elon musk presents plenty of situations for you to bash him i mean like i said i think you know sometimes he just boasts his stuff a little bit too much or just kind of like yeah like i think some of his uh ideas about the hyperloop he like talks about this whole like underground network under la but like there's a lot of yeah either way i'm just saying there's like criticisms of elon musk that you don't have to go out of your way for like you can just but you don't have to stretch it but in this case i think it just was a stretch because i don't know that there's now i think it's because elon musk has such like a fanboy crowd that like people just want to bring him down now yeah. Um, and if that's your only reason, then just stop. Oh, because... Also, another thing was people were using billionaire as a derogatory term because mm-hmm. I guess a lot of people believe that he's hoarding money, which seems hypocritical. Like, that's what screams at me. Like, yo, who the fuck doesn't want a billion dollars? And if you have a billion dollars, you're acting like everybody's going to give money away. Like, no, there's too many rich people as proof that people, people generally, when they get that much money, they want more money because you, you can't be satisfied. And yeah, I mean, I think there is just a f- sentiment in this country, especially with, like, people that are sympathetic towards, like, socialist ideas yeah, that I, there just shouldn't be billionaires. Like, that's just the problem in itself is that there are billionaires. Yeah, but that socialism doesn't necessarily affect the doesn't necessarily affect someone's personal wealth because socialism is everybody 
everybody is taken care of, everybody is equal, everybody gets the same certain, certain level of rights, that kind of shit. That should not affect somebody's wealth, because socialism can still exist in a capitalist world. So, and it is you could right now. Yeah, I don't. Not, I don't, like, I don't think the point. Like, yeah, you can take a more nuanced discussion or like a nuanced debate to it. But I mean, I think I'm just trying to say the sentiment of these people. Like, that's how they see it. Is that like, yeah, one person having this much wealth? Is I think that's wrong. hypocritical. And if you wanna, yeah, if you wanna criticize that or like, I think that's totally fair too. But I'm just just saying, just because someone is rich doesn't make them a shitty person. And it's not like he's that's another, another thing is that it's not like he's not trying to. He's not like he's a Trump. That's doing all this Trump shit, not trying to share any of the money, trying to take more money from people. He's trying to actually help. Like, well, yeah, that's, and that's again, the underlying thing. What I was saying is just like in this situation, I think Elon Musk's own response has really nailed it. And there's this one response where, yeah, somebody calls him out about like hoarding wealth and stuff. Yeah, and he, and he, said he says, he gives- here's all the stuff I've done, like, let's all the jobs he's created and stuff and then and then people were like saying like oh well you're a dick why did you have to come back so hard and like why you didn't even come back but it's like no all he did is say like well i've done a lot of stuff and yeah i have a lot of wealth but even if he doesn't talk about the jobs and shit he can talk about the potential impact to the environment because you you got to look at this shit as a timeline like it could from from this point he's he's put in place the the principle of electric cars and shit in, in in the world and that shit has been here since fucking 19 or something and people people didn't like it back then but he made people actually like it now and just doing that is normalizing something that could potentially save the world so i, I think i think there's also this thing too that like the last few years there's just been this really like um over optimism about like tech solutions and i feel think people are kind of starting to push back on that idea is that i don't know, like technocrats that like yeah, technology will solve all our issues no i don't know i'm just i just think that's an element of the the pushback in this situation because people are kind of saying no like yeah. no screw you elon musk like you're not just going to save the day with your fancy technology even though <laughs> well now luckily he wasn't discouraged because somebody else but, tweeted why don't you help Flint? And he said, I'm about to. And he actually contacted the mayor of Flint and started talking about different things that he can do to help the, the city. He wants he wants to, to raise the water quality to above the FDA standard. So he's gonna so he's gonna make it better than it even should be. And that's that's basically what he started working on. He's already started working on that. And the shit. The thing about Flint is that their water was poisoned because of the, the supply. The, yeah, the lead, lead in the pipes and shit. And 12 people have died from Legionnaires' disease. But apparently, it's been getting slightly better and better, but at such a slow pace that it's not helping. So all Elon Musk wants to do is help bring that up. But, so the ma- the mayor the mayor is telling Musk that he can help replace all the pipes like the ongoing project to replace all the pipes, which he could speed up like that, especially since he has the boring company, which might not seem like it, it correlates. Gas? What? Is it like gas? No. Gas? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what It's not boiled gas. Like. Oh, boiled. I thought you were saying bold gas. I'm like, what the fuck is bold gas? I don't know what boiled gas is either, though. Yeah, but at least it's, it's like hot. boiled gas in the pipes? No, it's bad water. Poisoned water. Yeah. Anyway, the shit is meant to cost two hundred million dollars, and Elon Musk is a billionaire who's about to make ten times the money he has now in the next three years from Tesla stock and also SpaceX shit. But anyway, he's he said he's willing to help. He's gonna donate time and resources because boring i don't even know i've been talking for a minute now yeah well you know i think i think kind of my whole takeaway from this is like you know it's kind of just even though i think people are probably a lot of uh, i'm just split on this because it's like yeah i think that there's a lot of videos and criticisms and stuff about elon musk's and things he's doing that are like totally valid but also like you know I'm appreciative that this dude does exist and that, that, you know, somebody out there is trying to be bold and innovative. Yeah. And I think people just need to find, like, a good balance of that and appreciate, like, what they do have and not... I don't know. 
I don't know, just accept it for what it is, I guess. But yeah. And I do think, yeah, he is, on the whole, doing positive stuff. Yeah, and I think he's gonna keep doing it. He, I think he really wants to be um, Iron Man. Like Tony Stark or some shit for our generation. And yeah. shit, good for him. Yeah. All I'm saying is you don't knock somebody who's actually trying to do good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Just because they were rescued doesn't mean they can't be used for many other things. It's still a good piece of tech that's been developed, at least for safety research. And the fact that it was so easy for them is should be impressive because they did that shit like that. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, was there a lot of pushback against the pushback? Yeah, it was, I'll say it was like really 30, 70. Much, but yeah. A lot of people were, yeah, but the, more people hate Elon Musk than like him. Yeah. yeah. And that's just kind of how this world is, you know? Like, yeah. the more good you try to do and, like, change the world, the more people are going to hate you. Nah, they mostly hate him because he's a billionaire. That's the whole reason. Yeah. Like, fuck out of here. So what? Well, I mean, I feel like, at least in history, like, if you're a person trying to change history, like, in your time, people hate you, but afterwards, like, you'll be appreciated yeah. and all that. But. And I get why they hate him, because of the whole corporations don't pay their taxes and shit, but not all corporations are the same. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know too much about him on that situation, but, I mean, I've never heard anything about him, like, having no. overseas tax havens. I mean, nah, I wouldn't he's, put it past he's, him. He's, what he's been trying to do is trying to stop his work is from unionizing. Yeah, recently he gave in, but you're not really oh, given. No. He said, that if we can't make your work situation better than with a union, we're going to let you unionize, which is kind of a cop out, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, if a business can function without a union, like, because a union just makes everything harder. Like, it's not like you, your board of directors just gets to set the policy and yeah. you can move forward. It's like, then you got to, like, have the union president agree to everything and everything has to be in negotiation. And, like, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, like, a lot more work yeah. and everything has to go through this, also, like, double also step. Also, the, the so. union has more leverage than Tesla in this situation because they just met their, their mark for the Model 3s. Yeah. And, yeah, they, they've... Reach seven thousand total cars a week, which apparently is a big deal for them. And they they're still hemorrhaging money because they put everything back in plus borrow some more. Yeah. So g giving the union their best case scenario, which is probably going to happen because they have so much leverage right now, would not cripple them, but it will cost them more money than they're willing to lose at this time. Which sounds yeah. yeah. It's just a business thing. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of depends on how the company wants to run it. Because some companies do want to basically just leave all that, like, basically have the union do all the work of figuring out what the people want and how to work that out. So yeah. it's like, but well, other companies want to just, like, do that. Say, like, hey, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want. And, like, we can work with you rather than having yeah. the union. But but you also, also you, it, the cost is the problem. Because unions aren't cheap. And unions, yeah, it's slow and costly, especially yeah. when they're negotiating shit. Yeah, fuck that. At least for now, it sounds fucked up, but yeah, yeah they finally they finally close to making profit, and that's all they want to do. Well, and I think the like a strike isn't. I mean, usually a strike has like justified means, but like I'm also yeah, they, they a strike wouldn't happen strike. if there's not a union. So it's like, but I also think there's a lot of times that like people strike just because they're in, their union told them mm -hmm. to, even if they don't really like agree with it. They're just like, oh. Yeah. So I think if you have that ability to negotiate with like people on an individual level, then you can avoid situations like that where you're like kind of in this stuck strike, you know, between yeah. just like a few people's interests and the company. So anyway, that whole discussion i don't know if that necessarily relates to the situation with elon musk oh sure i forgot about that yeah yeah do you want to talk about me um i'll leave that to you <laughs> sure so um you know i just couldn't stand not talking about donald trump well i mean i guess the stormy daniels we're we're calling that a trump story because it's it's the only reasonable conclusion i think anybody could reach but just kidding um but not really but uh we just had to you know well i had to i guess anyway fucking point is donald trump met with nato did his donald trump thing and 
We had a really awkward breakfast discussion after he chug, chugged his orange juice down. And a whole lot of apparently shit. John Kelly, who looks really disappointed <laughs> in the video. So yeah, it's like he's having breakfast with the NATO allies and just he's just rambling on about how disappointed he is and NATO not like paying their part and just nobody's eating and everybody's just kind of like sitting there yeah. <laughs> but but apparently Sarah Huckabee Sanders like responded to what people were saying about John Kelly and that the reason he was, thing, yeah. he was looked disappointed was he thought there was gonna be better food or something. <laughs> yeah but nobody's even eating food in the clip so I don't even know what yeah that's obviously a cop out but. but anyway um so in true Trump fashion he basically after his rant there was a meeting and essentially from what I've gathered uh all the NATO allies basically agreed to just keep on spending what they were spending and it, if they were going to increase security like it was already their previous plan to just like follow their plan um yeah but, they, they didn't really do shit yeah but uh Trump went did a press release after which he doesn't really do anymore these days or a press conference talking about his win and or how he was like persuaded NATO but no it, it doesn't really even seem like anything happened so although there was a plan worked out for for the security against or like from Russia that Trump apparently did agree to and further cyber security yeah uh, but yeah then he was also like calling out Germany like accusing them basically of what it was, do you remember like what he said exactly? He, like he, he, he said he, Germany has gets most of the energy from Russia. And yeah, but he's like almost like saying that like he's saying Russia has a hold up over them because yeah. they get most of the energy from Russia. So yeah. Germany, Germany is being a hypocrite for calling U.S. out and all that shit. But Michael basically said shit. We remember Soviet, so, Soviet Germany. We don't fuck with that shit. Yeah, you and that's why that's how where she grew yeah. up was yeah. in Soviet Germany, and so. He's basically saying we got this shit under control. Like, we need each other, so... Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's kind of absurd to be saying you're beholden to who you get your energy from. No, but it, it is... it is your natural resources from. I mean, to a degree, but... It, it is... It, it's it a it whole free sense. market. Yeah. But I mean... No, but they do get a shit ton of energy, like 60% from Russia, which... Yeah. And apparently they're looking at a pipeline yeah. that's going to go straight to Germany, so they're going to get even more, so... And that's kind of what Trump was criticizing. Yeah, well, but that's beneficial for both Russia and Germany. If Germany pulls out of that, Russia loses a lot of money. But I mean, I think Angela Merkel's, like, response nailed it when she was so basically like, yeah, this is independence at work. Like, we're mm -hmm. basically negotiating a deal here, and that's what it is. That's freedom. So, it's not. Yeah. It's, beneficiary, it's beneficial to both sides. So, then it does, no, nobody is beholden to anybody if it's beneficial yeah. to both sides. I mean, I, I guess it is somewhat controversial there, and I'm sure there is, yeah. like, concern because they Because Russia could abuse that shit. Yeah. And they are, to a degree, political yeah. adversaries. But that's what NATO is for. Yeah. Yeah, to make sure Germany and other countries are protected from Russia's shit. Yeah, it would be kind of dope to be Russian, though. Um, but yeah, then apparently, uh, high, high up uh, generals, military generals, went on damage control. Um, after Trump returned from NATO to just reassess that. Because Trump know, made comments that if they didn't up their spending, he might just do his own thing. And so it was pretty unclear what that meant, but so apparently the uh, Pentagon officials- Like, nah, we're not doing that fucking shit. Yeah, called up NATO allies to say, hey, we're not pulling out, we're not gonna take out any troops, um, all- Yeah. Basically, yeah, bases are staying open and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. How does that feel to be treated like a baby all the fucking time? Because you know he notices that shit. Because they let him do his talking, then they talk him out of it, and then he, he, he. I think it's just he's gotten next. used to it at this point. He just yeah. knows he can go and say whatever he wants, and if it was like too much, he'll have some somebody mm -hmm. like straighten things back out in. for him. Yeah. So. 
That's not good for him. No, it's really it's not a good way to that's, go. That's not even good. That's things. not good for children. And Trump, yeah, Trump is worse than a child. That's really not good for him. He yeah. will abuse that shit so much. Well, and it just it, it's also just like destroyed American like discourse and like yeah, because we can't even. Anytime you want to reference something the president said, it's like, well, did he really mean it that it way? Change? Or in in every situation, you can like bend it to fit whatever. Like, and also, he changes his mind all the time. So, yeah, but I think that's our show. Yep, that's it for this week. Peace.